out here today talking to people, asking them about the situation with the Veterans Affairs Office and whether or not it's okay for our soldiers to come back from overseas and not get the health care they need. It's pretty ridiculous. Let's see what people out here have to say. Do you think it's right that our veterans come home from combat and just the veterans from Vietnam till now aren't able to get the health care they need? I don't think that's right. I feel like they should get the health care they need. Well, I do too. Well, yesterday CNN came out with a report that the Veterans Affairs Office in Phoenix, Arizona had what they like to call a secret list. And in that secret list, it had 1,600 soldiers. And out of those 1,600 soldiers, 40 have died now. And they put them on the list because they figured that they didn't need to get the health care. So it's kind of like, you know, some of you are okay to be seen, some of you aren't. So it's basically like a death panel. How do you feel about that? You know, that our heroes come back from over there and they don't get the treatment they need. I don't think that's right. I definitely think they should get the treatment they need. Uh, if they're serving our country and protecting us, then they should be held above us. Of course not. Of course not. I did hear of it. It was in Arizona or something like that. Yes, in Phoenix. Yeah. No, I definitely don't think they should be treated that way. Um, do you have Obamacare? No, I don't. Well, you know, for the rest of Americans who are getting it and the ones that ask for it, that is government-run health care. That's what our soldiers have been dealing with for years now. That's what the rest of America has to look forward to. I have no, no comment. It seems pretty serious, but I'm... I mean, do you think our soldiers that fight for our country should be treated this way? Uh, probably not. Not enough. Well, I've been doing it almost 10 years, uh, especially my benefits. And, yeah, and you know, it took a while for me to even get 10%. But tell me about your friend. You said he has some issues with the uh, VA's office and how they're, it, they're uh, prescribing him medication that's making him, you said, a little off, a little loopy? Yes, he was uh, in Iraq and he's receiving medication for the bipolar thing that was increased uh, in the time he was in the war. And he's already taking care of it. He has not solved the problem. So the, the medication that the VA is not helping him out at all whatsoever, it's making him worse? Yeah, he thinks so. He want to quit the medication, but they insist that he should keep on trying with the medication and not stop it. That's, that's astounding, dude. Like, I, I, we, here in America, we're, we're going through all this stuff about how we're trying to better our health care and how everybody needs it. And, I, and for our veterans, to, like, this to be happening to our veterans, I'm just... Uh, I'm, I'm a loss of words right now. Well, that is government-run health care. Right now we have a skyrocketing uh, amount of suicides from veterans. Do you think that we should be limiting the amount of uh, deployments we give our soldiers? I say that we need to do what's best for the country and other countries. But I mean for the soldiers themselves. I mean, they're the ones who get sent over there to fight for us. Yes. I mean, do you think that we should be, when they come home, prescribing them drugs that on the bottle clearly says causes anxiety, causes depression? It depends on the doctor. The doctors obviously know what they're doing, and they're going to prescribe drugs that are supposed to help the situation for those individual soldiers, for their needs. Right. I have heard of it, and um, unfortunately, it concerns me that that's what's going to happen to our medical system across the country, too. Yeah, that's what, no, that's what most people aren't really, you know, putting together, that that's government-run health care. Yeah. That's what Obamacare is going to be, and people just seem to be all, you know, happy about it, but they don't understand that, you know, someone like me that's a vet that's been going through that for 10 years, I'm not getting any help at all. So, you know, no one else is going to be getting that now. No, it's just going to get worse. Believe me, I'm, I'm worried. It's a telltale thing of what is to come in, in full effect when we get uh, Obamacare. It's all selective. You're not getting everything that's being promised to you. You're going to be on a list for certain things. If you're going to be in a need for emergency surgeries, there's going to be people ahead of you, even though you can afford it. If not, it's all going to be selective. The doctors and everything through the healthcare system also are going to be able to pick, pick who can live and who can die if your situation is um, uh, vastly important to them or not. Uh, uh, you know, basically on their agenda. Yeah, basically it's a death panel. I mean, they said that they were, health care is not important for young and for old. So essentially we're just saying that we can pick and choose who we want to take care of and everyone else is just left to die. I mean, it's a horrible thing. Thank you, Obama. Yeah, but no, I, I agree, but at the same time you can't, like the idea of 
throwing the baby out with the bathwater, like government screws everything up, therefore we can't trust them to do anything right. I mean, I hate to say it, but we do have a pretty solid, though broken sometimes, infrastructure. We have running water and electricity. Our government does do a lot of things well. If we gave it the power to do things correctly, then maybe we would all get the health care we needed, including our veterans. Do you, do you think it's okay that our veterans that serve and fight for our country overseas come back home and they're denied health care? I don't get it. Well, they're not good. They need your help. Right, we've been out here today talking to people about the veterans and how they're not getting proper health care and how that ties into government-run health care, i.e. Obamacare. This is what we have to look forward to in America. My friends, Alex Jones here to tell you about some of the most important information concerning you and your family's health. Radiation levels have more than doubled in the last 60 years in the Northern Hemisphere from all of the nuclear testing and radiological accidents. Radioactive contamination is now in most of the food supply. There's only two ways to avoid this. Move south of the equator or properly protect your thyroid with nascent iodine. Looking to protect my family, I've done deep research. Nascent iodine is the purest, cleanest, absolute best form of iodine to protect yourself and your family. It's made right here in the USA, completely non-GMO. I searched out the best quality and now have developed a double strength form of nascent iodine, exclusively available at InfoWarsLife.com. Nascent iodine is on record as one of the only safe ways to detox from fluoride poisoning. Survival Shield Nascent Iodine. Secure your super high quality nascent iodine today at InfoWarsLife.com. That's InfoWarsLife.com. An often overlooked link that ties many domestic terror suspects together is their relationship with federal authorities. Case in point, the recent shooter in Kansas. It's been reported that Fraser Glenn Cross, originally Fraser Glenn Miller, became a federal flunky to reduce his jail time for KKK activities years ago. Upon his release from jail, reports claim Cross became a paid informant until the shootings in Overland Park, Kansas, where he targeted the Jewish community. From shootings to bombings, lawyers for alleged Boston bomber Johar Zarnayev say that the FBI had numerous contacts with their client's older brother, Tamerlan. This fits in with the mother of the Zarnayev brothers stating that the FBI contacted Tamerlan after the bombings and before he was listed as a suspect. Not to mention Tamerlan attending CIA-sponsored workshops and the DHS and FBI being briefed to Tamerlan's activities well before the bombing in Boston. But sometimes feds need their informants active on the digital plane. Court documents show that Hector Monsinger, the FBI informant who ratted out hackers from the group's LulzSec and Anonymous, directed hundreds of cyber attacks against the government websites of Iran, Syria, Pakistan, Brazil, and others. And if you're convinced that all of the prior are simply isolated incidents, watch this. If you ask the leadership of the FBI, most of whose field agents are tireless, dedicated, constitution-supporting professionals, it will tell you that it, the FBI, has foiled about 17 plots to kill Americans during the past 10 years. What it will not tell you is that there have been 20 foiled plots, and of them, three were interrupted by members of the public. The 17 that were interrupted by the feds were created by the feds. One of the incidents Judge Napolitano goes on to point out is the underwear bomber. InfoWars talked with eyewitness Kurt Haskell about what he saw on the underwear bomber flight. In January 2010, we had hearings in Congress on this where we had Under Secretary of State Patrick Kennedy come out. And if you watch the video of him, it's pretty telling that he's trying to uh, cover up something and not tell the truth. He's squirming in his chair and seems really uncomfortable answering the questions. And this video is all over the Internet if you want to Google it and look at it. But what he said is basically, you know, we knew Abdul Mutalab was a terrorist. We wanted to stop him from coming in the country and revoke his visa. There have been numerous cases where our unilateral and uncoordinated revocation of a visa would have disrupted important investigations that were underway by one of our national security partners. They had the individual under investigation and our revocation action would have disclosed U.S. government's interest in that individual and ended our colleagues' ability, such as the FBI, to pursue the case quietly and to identify terrorist plans and co-conspirators. But we had a request from an intelligence agency, and he didn't say which one. What he said was, we'll talk about it in closed session. 
And he said, we had a request from an intelligence agency that they're tracking Abdul Muttalab. They, uh, they want to let him into the U.S. to follow him and to catch bigger fish. And they honored that request in order to let whatever intelligence agency do their business so that they wouldn't knock out one lone soldier in the war on terror and they could essentially follow him in the U.S. and catch accomplices. So that's what they admitted to. But Patrick Kennedy went on to say, there's more to this we need to talk about in closed session, and that's kind of where it ended. So uh, obviously, I don't believe that for a minute. Uh, what uh, I believe through and what's been shown through the evidence, I believe, is that an intelligence agency gave Abdul Muttalab an intentionally defective bomb and put him on the plane to stage a fake terrorist attack. And we'll end looking at the 1993 World Trade Center bombing. Last winter, the FBI was praised for its speed in cracking the case of the World Trade Center bombing and bringing four suspects to trial. Now, there is some evidence that the FBI may have known of the plot in advance through an informant and might, might even have stopped the bombing that killed six people. FBI agents might have been able to prevent last February's deadly explosion at New York's World Trade Center. They discussed secretly substituting harmless powder for the explosives, but they didn't, according to the FBI's own informant, Imad Salem. Unbeknownst to the FBI at the time, Salem recorded many of his conversations with his handlers. You got paid regularly for, for good information. Uh, if that's what you think, guys, is fine. But I don't think that because we was start already building the bomb which is went off in the World Trade Center. It was built by uh, uh, supervising uh, supervision from the Bureau and the GA, and we was all informed about it, and we know that the bombs start to be built. By who? By your confidential informant. What a wonderful, great case. Did you hear that? The informant claims he built the bomb under the direction of the FBI. You can find more reports at InfoWars.com. Celebrate the spirit of freedom and liberty upon which our nation was founded at InfoWarsShop.com. Molon Lave is ancient Greek for come and take it. This popular design combines both classic Greek Spartan imagery with modern M16 assault rifles. Now available in women's tees and proudly made in the USA. And now you can protect yourself from corrupt cops with the InfoWars dash cam. It's your car's black box that records all that the driver sees and hears. And introducing the Block It Pocket. It renders your phone undetectable while protecting your private data and your health. Or take back your privacy and protect your personal information by getting your very own Detractor cell phone pouch. So get incredibly high quality freedom-based products and help fund the revolution at InfoWarsShop.com. You are watching the InfoWars Nightly News, which airs 7 p.m. Central at InfoWarsNews.com. Members can share their passcodes with up to 11 other people, and your support is helping us defend liberty worldwide.